back to the New World next week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. MK Ultra gets a 2017 reboot. We've got that story, plus taxation is voluntary theft. But first, a handful of tweeters, backed by the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University, sued President Donald Trump on Tuesday, July 11th, claiming their constitutional rights are being violated because the president has blocked them from his at real Donald Trump Twitter handle. The suit claims that Trump's Twitter feed is a public forum and an official voice of the president, excluding people from reading or replying to his tweets, especially because they tweeted critical comments, amounts to a First Amendment breach. Quote, the at real Donald Trump account is kind of a digital town hall in which the president and his aides use the tweet function to communicate news and information to the public and members of the public use the reply function to respond to the president and his aides and exchange views with one another, end quote. So says the lawsuit with a PDF link for you filed in a New York federal court. Now, there's a nearly year long history to this, I think, kind of sad little phenomenon of people trying to be the first to tweet back at America's next top president. The media hype kind of started, from what I can tell, with The Atlantic back in December of 2016 with their article titled, First Reply to Trump Tweet is Prime Media Space. And that kind of set the set the feeding frenzy going. And I could already kind of see it and hear it and gather it up just a little bit around in, in the zeitgeist. Then, of course, BuzzFeed and Gizmodo and uh, they all piled on later as this is sort of Troll America's love affair with the two minutes hate and I think the love affair just kind of keeps getting hotter and heavier. Taken as a whole, James, I think these stories are a really interesting look at a lot of sound and fury. And we may just, again, kind of file this under Troll America 2017, James. I guess so. I'm trying to think of, you know, where I sit in this story. And as a non-American slash non-statist, I just, I don't know how to even relate to this story. But I'm going to put on my statist hat. I should actually get a MAGA hat. Yeah, I shouldn't do that just for status James. Uh, What would status James think about this story? I guess, I mean, there is something to this in the sense that if this was a presidential account being used to tweet official governmental business, then yes, I, I, I can understand the idea, well, every American should have access to it. But it isn't. It's his at real Donald Trump personal account. There is an at POTUS account, right? So I think if there's anything, then yes, I I think this type of case could proceed with an at POTUS account. But at real Donald Trump is his personal account. So unless he's giving out, you know, specific information about what the government's doing on that account. Anyway, uh, you know, this (laughs) I just don't know where to situate myself in this story. But I guess it's interesting, if nothing else, it is interesting that... These types of things are things that I guess need to be sorted out in in some way, um, it, you know, given the status system we're living under. Um, but it's so bizarre to me that it's happening with this, what, 70, 74 year old president or whatever is the one that's setting these tweeting uh, uh, precedents, not the not the previous president who was the, the going to be the cyber president and all this. He's young. He's only he's in his 40s, man. He's he's hip. But no, no, apparently it's the uh, the almost octogenarian who is setting the tweeting precedents for POTUS. That is an interesting side to this. I think in, in some ways we're always actually a little bit behind all the technologies and ideas that sort of get pushed in the in the meme sphere. Sean Spicer is is, is also noted as a defendant in this lawsuit. And I think the one part where they may kind of get into trouble is Spicer and others, others, I think, have said, well, Trump, you know, says what he wants to on his Twitter account. And those should be those should be considered. I forget his exact quote. I should have it here in front of me. But those should be considered. They essentially called them policy statements coming from the president. So they have kind of touted the stature of Trump's tweets. And I think that's going to be maybe the one thing that kind of gets them into trouble. Of course, there's any number of ways to get around this, like signing out of Twitter, and then you can see everything. But then again, you don't have the ability to reply to everything. Big boo-hoo, I suppose, as we'll move to our second segment on this New World Next Week, episode 316 for July 13th, 2017. And our second segment on this episode is kind of a trilogy of brave New World Order stories. First up, 
Researchers at Carnegie Mellon University recently made a scientific breakthrough using machine algorithms to accurately guess what people are thinking. In other words, as the university referred to it, they have harnessed mind-reading technology to decode complex thoughts. Now, the technology does not actually identify the actual words. Researchers say they've made enough progress that, quote, machine learning algorithms with brain imaging technology can effectively read minds. Using the smart algorithm, the, t the team could discern what was being thought about at any given time and even the order of a particular sentence. After training the algorithm on 239 of the 240 sentences and their corresponding brain scans, the researchers were able to predict the final sentence based only on the brain data. So that 240 out of the 239. They were able to make predictions with 87% accuracy and in a reverse exercise accurately predicted brain activity based on sentence information. So we've got PDF links to that research as well, just as everything that we mentioned on these shows will always be included down in the show notes. Mind control story the second. Top Silicon Valley executive developing telepathic mind control technology. This comes from Activist Post, a former Google X executive. Mary Lou Jepsen wants to bring telepathy to your list of technological needs, accomplishing this feat through a simple ski hat. Jepsen told CNBC, quote, I figured out how to basically put the functionality of an MRI machine, a multi-million dollar MRI machine, into a wearable in the form of a ski hat. If I threw you into an MRI machine right now, I can tell you what words you're about to say, what images are in your head. I can tell you what music you're thinking of. That's today. And I'm just talking about shrinking that down. So we'll have original links to that story on CNBC. And for the hat trick, mind control story number three, DARPA gives $65 million to brain implant program for super soldier project. Now, all you crazy conspiracy theorists that have talked about super soldiers for many decades. And of course, now we can add in Elon Musk and the rest of the usual suspects. And we can see the transhumanist agenda kind of being booted up or rebooted up right in front of us. James, is this CIA's kind of MK Ultra version? May I call it version 2030? Well, I, I suppose it's either version 2030 or maybe version 2000. And I mean that because when these types of stories are all coming out all at once, I mean, there's clearly something zeitgeisty about this, but there's also, I think, a bit of a push behind this technology right now. And that means either that it's all hype and, and they're just, you know, hyping up technology that doesn't really exist. And they're not really, I mean, they're not really on the verge of being able to read your mind, but they want you to believe they are. Or they've already been doing this for 20 years and they're just introducing it to the public. So I think those are generally the two options. When we see all of this uh, reaching the, the MSM, it, it generally means we're either 20 years behind or they're just typing something that doesn't exist. So I'll let you out there come to your own conclusions about which one is uh, pertaining in this case. But clearly... There's a lot of different research interests that are centering around this. And you mentioned Elon Musk and Neuralink. If people are interested in that, I did write about that in my subscriber newsletter back in April, uh, writing about the brain chip cometh. Because for the last several months, there's been a lot of uh, these feel-good press stories about, oh, you know, we'll make cripples walk again, we'll cure Parkinson's and all this by just implanting a brain chip. And hey, guys, what could go wrong? Um, so this is the transhumanist push and it's also about surveillance technology and all this sort of thing, all of the ramifications of the super soldiers. I mean, it all converges here, and it's all about basically wiring directly into your brain one way or another. And uh, I think it is disturbing whether it's all hype and they're just trying to put it in the public consciousness or it already exists and they're just introducing it to the public. Either way, it's creepy because it does show which way we're going. We're going towards the... The, the we can read your mind, we know everything you're going to do before you do it. And it, I mean, we all know where that goes. The scientific, you know, the science fiction predictive programming has taught us, if nothing else, that, uh, you know, pre-crime and all of these types of ideas are coming. They really are coming and they are going to try to roll all of this out. And this is the very, very first inkling of the first stage of the first step towards something like that. Hey, guys, we're working on this wonderful brain mind reading technology. So uh, I, I don't know what the... I don't know what the other side of that is. I don't know what the solution to that is or what we do about that. But at any rate, it's, I suppose, good to know that this is in, in, in the offing, that this is coming down and that they are going to try rolling this out. 
ever more uh, in your face, I think, in the coming years. James, as I kind of said to you off mic before we were rolling, I initially thought that this these sets of stories were all kind of the same story. I saw these slew of stories about mind control using hashtag New World Next Week. And again, we get most of our stories from the listeners, from the audience using the hashtag. I thought they were just kind of the same story. And it was only once I started to kind of collate the episode, I was like, wait, this is Carnegie Mellon. This is MIT. This is some other research. These are all those different stories. And again, all happening kind of at the same time as though they got the, the, the go sign from the powers that shouldn't be. Our third and final story this week, we pull our shoots and float down to not unmitigated good news island as Norway's voluntary tax plan doesn't do so well. This story via Bloomberg notes that they were hammered by their political opposition for slashing taxes and going on a spending spree with the country's oil money. Norway's so-called center-right government hit back with a bold proposal, voluntary contributions. Launched just last month, the initiative has received a lukewarm reception with the equivalent of just 1325 bucks in extra revenue being collected so far, which is not much for a country of five plus million people already accustomed to paying some of the highest taxes in the world. Norway's finance minister said, quote, the tax scheme was set up to allow those who want to pay more taxes to do so in a simple and straightforward way. If anyone thinks the tax level is too low, they now have the chance to pay more. In quote. So, James, this is either a not unmitigated good news story or at least maybe a teachable moment. A teachable moment, certainly, uh, for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, this is the concept of voluntary taxation, which taxation is theft, but voluntary taxation is not theft. So there's I mean, that is a, a real thing. Of course, in this context, it has generated almost no revenue, as you would expect in one of the highest taxed uh, countries in the world. Uh, I can't remember. I think the uh, personal income taxes uh, caps out at 47% or something. Uh, extremely high taxes in Norway. So perhaps understandable that not many people are taking up on uh, taking them up on this. And I think this was something of a trolley kind of thing for the government to do because their uh, opposition was complaining, oh, you're you're cutting taxes, you know, oh, we need to tax the rich more. And so they're saying, okay, money where your mouth is. You know, if you want to pay more taxes, here you go. And no one takes them up on it. Um, so I think it's more of a political maneuver than anything. But it does at least raise the concept of voluntary taxation, which sounds ridiculous to our ears because we exist in this place where oh you have to pay your taxes it's theft they're coming you know pay your ransom to the the would-be kidnappers um but actually it does raise the very interesting possibility of a decentralized non-government uh space that could function in some way, through voluntary taxation. And Liberland might be the example that people might uh, hold up. But at any rate, the idea that if there's something that, I guess not a government, but something that is organizing or running a geographical space, and they say, hey guys, we need, we need this highway, we need this road, we need whatever. If you want to pay, let's let's get it going and do kind of GoFundMe's for different infrastructure projects and things that need to be done. And the people decide, do we need this? Will I pay? How much will I pay? Uh, it's a fascinating concept and it provides a different way of thinking about how these things that are unthinkable without the monopoly force of violence of uh, goons showing up at your door and demanding their uh, bribes how could it poss how can we possibly organize society without that well voluntary taxation may actually be a real thing that could actually be done if we could get out of the statist box so Hats off to Norway for at least raising the concept, <laughs> although uh, clearly uh, the execution didn't quite come through in the way that uh, I think some people might have thought. And I think the funniest part of this, I was reading this in a comment or on Twitter or somewhere, so take it for what it's worth, but I believe they were saying it cost something like five times more just for the bureaucracy of setting this up so that people could voluntarily pay their taxes than they actually collected in voluntary taxes. So it actually ended up costing the government. So actually, James, let me let me throw you a on the spot curveball question just because I'm thinking about it. We're talking about taxes and we're talking about things playing out on Twitter as they seem to do. And that's Chelsea Manning. I don't know if you've seen her discussions going back and forth 
with some of the anarchy ball folks. And I, I also find it really interesting, as I, I talked about on my own morning show this morning, today is the 10th anniversary of the attacks in Baghdad that would later lead to the leaks by then Bradley Manning, the collateral murder videos. It's really interesting to watch on Twitter at XY Chelsea, you know, and she, and she said, I, I'm listening to your arguments about taxation, but it's really strange kind of back and forth. I, I just want your take on that real quick. Yeah, I did notice that. I do find it kind of weird uh, of all the things I would have expected uh, Manning to be tweeting about and getting into Twitter uh, arguments about. This is not one of them. But uh, as some have pointed out, is this Stockholm syndrome where Manning is now, what, in love with the captors that, that locked Manning away for however many years. It's, it is strange. Um, but we'll throw a link in to, uh, to this kind of tweet exchange so people can go and read through some of this. It is, it is bizarre, but at any rate, the, uh, the argument seems to be something like, you know, we, we need, uh, automation is coming to take your job, so we need more taxes so that we can all live or something. It's a bizarre exchange. Uh, it's a bizarre exchange that includes an emoji of someone with a pitchfork, as in people with pitchforks need to come and make you give up your thefts. So I'll throw in a little bit of other good news and hopefully not unmitigated good news in the form of the latest episode of Good News Next Week. I made a spinoff from this very show. And I call it Good News Next Week, and it's sort of some of the ways that we are winning, I say, in solutions-oriented stories. And the cover story this week is Cheers, there is new probiotic beer. And there's also stories about uh, David fighting Goliath and all this some more not unmitigated legal weed news going on in Nevada. So that is the latest episode of some positive news, some good news that I think we all need. And you can support our work via Patreon. And just as we're talking about platforms that may or may not have to give you free speech or otherwise, I know, James, you and I both have been fairly early adopters of what's called BitChute. Dot com, and that is the peer-to-peer -peer video sharing platform. So for every tweet, what did we even just see a Syrian girl saying, ah, my video on YouTube got censored. It's like, hello, join us on BitChute. James? Yeah, that's exactly right. People can check them out. And uh, I believe they are on Patreon now if people want to support that and help them to expand so that they really do become the YouTube killer that they can and should be. Uh, this is where we got to be moving and we got to be supporting the outlets, outlets out there that are allowing uh, programs like this to continue, regardless of whatever the GooTube monsters want to do with their platform. Let's abandon them. Let's go to the alternatives. I think we can take that to heart in almost every aspect of our lives. And uh, in the meantime, we'll continue here documenting what's going on in uh, GooTubeville and elsewhere. Uh, James, looking forward to next week. Thanks, buddy. Take care.